Hey gang, it's Rob, and this is part two of our video series for Security Plus Test Prep. So if it's your first time seeing me, I'm Rob, an educator and founder of ITMasterKey.com, and it's my goal to make sure that everybody watching this video gets certified. So I would appreciate it if you subscribe to the channel and like the video so maybe I can become a successful YouTuber and finally move out of my mama's house. So if you need an overview of who the Security Plus exam is actually for, make sure you go to part one of this series and watch that video and then jump back to this video and go through this test prep again let's not waste any more time let's get straight into the test prep if this is your first test prep with me what we do is we go through the questions we go through the answers and then as a family we figure out what the answer actually is and why that is the answer make sense let's go ahead and get to it julian works for a mid-level security firm as a resident SOC analyst julian is expected to keep the network safe one late afternoon, he begins an investigation into a self-propagating virus that seems to have infected the network. This memory resident virus is consuming network bandwidth at an alarming rate. Which type of virus does Julian's network most likely have? So Julian's network most likely has a big worm. Shout out to Friday. So worm. So a worm is a virus that just replicates itself, replicates itself. So it's one worm, then it's 10 worms, then it's 100 worms, then it's 1,000 worms, then it's a million worms. So it keeps on copying itself, trying to eat up as much bandwidth and as much resources as possible until pretty much you can't use the network or you can't use the device that the virus is actually on. Ty purchased a tablet for his grandmother a few days ago which she has yet to use. When Ty asked his grandmother why she hadn't used it, she complained, there's so much stuff on there, I don't know where to start. She starts to point out all the programs that came preloaded on the tablet. What would best describes the programs that Grammy Graham is referring to? So again, this is a great example of you have to know acronyms, right? So a best practice that I give my students, here goes some free game, is pretty much whenever you see an acronym, you look it up, you see what it does, see what it stands for, and what happens if it breaks, all right? So you kind of got to know all the little nuances, but at minimum, you need to know what it stands for. So this question you may not know because you don't know what these acronyms stand for, right? So the answer is PUP or PUP. So that is potentially unwanted programs. You know, when you buy a phone or you get a tablet or you get a laptop, a lot of times it comes preloaded with a program that you either are never use or you want to delete or you're going to uninstall them. So those would be classified as um, PUPs or PUPs, potentially unwanted programs. So his grandma was like, I don't know what's going on. You know, she may not have been too tech savvy. She's like, what is all this stuff on here? I don't want these programs. Jake is running late for the fifth time this week. He works as a system administrator for Cyber Inc. He fears his boss will terminate him if he is caught running late. As soon as Jake enters the office, his boss fires him immediately. A week later, a specialist found a backdoor script on Jake's computer that executed the day he was fired. What type of malware had Jake created? So Jake kind of knew he was messing up. Like, man, I keep on, you know, staying up all night uh, playing NBA 2K. I'm staying up all night uh, playing uh, Among Us or whatever I'm doing. I'm staying up all night staring at the wall. But whatever he was doing was making him late for work five days in a row, right? So he pretty much knew once I go into work, it's a wrap. It's over with. This dude is going to fire me. or so he, so he probably been doing it for a while. So what he did was set up a logic bomb. Right. So a logic bomb is a virus that doesn't actually execute until a certain date, time or an actual event happens. So probably once they suspended his account and deleted his admin account and stuff like that, the um, logic bomb automatically executed and pretty much messed up the network or messed up the actual device. OK, here's a word from our sponsors. Jim is noticing a lot of failed login attempts 
for a user account. It seems a hacker may be trying to gain access to the accounts remotely. The hacker is using common passwords with 600 different usernames. The hacker hopes to brute force his way into the account. This type of attack is most closely related to which of the following? So this is called password spraying. Just like uh, when you're uh, in a video game, you get scared, you start shooting everywhere, you know, you pray and spray. That's pretty much what this is. So what happens is the attacker uses common passwords, you know, password one, two, three, QWERTY one, two, three, uh, cat one, two, three, just use a bunch of common passwords on several different uh, user accounts and hope that, you know, one of these user accounts has um, terrible password management, right? Pretty much has a password that anybody could guess. So password spraying is throwing a bunch of passwords at a user account and hoping that one of those passwords is the user's actual password. So in the comments, make sure that you drop who you bank with and then drop your username and password just so I can make sure that the security is up to snuff, okay? All right, gang, that's it for today. If you haven't done so, please like this video and subscribe so I can continue to make videos just like this to help you guys out. Other than that, you already know you can head over to itmasterkey.com and enroll inside of our full Security Plus course. And if you've watched part one and you've watched this as well, and some of these questions uh, are kind of um, beating you up a little bit and you kind of don't know what the hell is going on, drop in the comments, hey, I don't know what the hell is going on, but I will. Meaning that you're going to continue to watch this series and by the end of it, hopefully you feel a little bit better. And another thing, just a caveat, just a side note, a lot of these questions are harder than uh, what you may actually see on the actual exam. So if you feel comfortable with these questions, you should feel uh, comfortable with the questions on the exam, um, but not um, much harder. All right. So it's not like uh, you're going to see these long ass essay questions on this video. And then when you get in the actual exam room, it's going to be like, how do you spell computer? Anyway, uh, make sure that you stay and uh, what am I trying to say? Make sure that you uh, subscribe to uh, the channel and make sure that you uh, stay up on this series. And other than that, I'll see you in class.